when I was growing up, I was raised in a very religious home. There are many times my mom and dad looked at me and thought, will this kid be a criminal when he grows up? <laughs> my daddy was a church deacon. My mother was a church pianist. I was the church brat. <laughs> and I wasn't your normal brat. I was the type of kid when people met me, they knew why some animals eat their young. <laughs> I was sent to a psychiatrist in the third grade. The principal of my school called my mother to, office, to the, her office and said, Ms. Lowry, your boy needs psychiatric help. <laughs> Mama went out in the lobby and she said, Mark, you've been chosen out of your whole school to get to go and take some tests. I said, well, hot dog, Mom. <laughs> And I went and saw this psychiatrist. She asked me questions about my mother and my father, and my older brother, Mike, who is perfect. <laughs> perfect people have no right to live. He never did anything wrong, and he made me look terrible. And she didn't ask about my little sister because she wasn't born yet. <laughs> Melissa came along nine years after me, and Mama told me she waited nine years between me and Melissa because she's scared to death she's going to have another one like me. <laughs> Melissa came along and she was perfect too. There I was sandwiched between two perfect siblings and it wasn't fair. Middle kid, psychiatrist finished all of her tests, the ink block tests, all these little tests they run on you. She went out in the lobby and told my mother I was normal. Mama said, what? <laughs> Mama didn't believe that so she took me to another doctor to get a second opinion. And that doctor ran an EEG on my brain. Do you know what an EEG is? It's a test where they tape wires to your head. And I thought they were gonna electrocute me. <laughs> and that came up normal too. Mama was frustrated, but Daddy wasn't frustrated. Daddy found a scripture in Proverbs <laughs> chapter 22 that says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction We'll drive it far, far away. <laughs> That changed my life. <laughs> Daddy started taking God at his word and beating the devil out of me every night. <laughs> and my dad is not a child abuser. I don't mean to give you that impression. My dad never hollers. He never yells. He never screams. He's always about that far from a coma. Even at football games, he doesn't scream. He just sits there. Everybody else can be screaming, having a great time. My dad just sitting there. If he gets real excited about the football game, he'll go. <laughs> then you know he's on the verge of a heart attack. <laughs> but he gets upset. When you pushed him too far, he doesn't holler. He doesn't yell. He goes like this. <laughs> Did you hear that? He goes. You know, you could stand right next to him. He could go. You probably wouldn't even hear it. I can hear it blocks away. <laughs> when my dad goes, your party's over. <laughs> and mama's the opposite of my dad. Where dad is calm, cool, and collected. Mama can't spell collected. <laughs> mama is a screamer. Do you know what a screamer is? A screamer! <laughs> it's someone you don't pay any attention to until she hits a certain pitch. And you know mama's hit that certain pitch when garage doors fly open all over the neighborhood. <laughs> mama used to look at me and say, Mark! <laughs> you just wait till your dad comes home. <laughs> My dad always came home. <laughs> he'd be driving up the driveway, he'd hear my mother, Charles, you got a whip mark! <laughs> the garage door would slam on the hood of his car. <laughs> dad would go, 